Hey everybody, Patty Ann here again today. Today I'm going to show you a real quick little tutorial on what I've done for a project I'm working on. I do paint parties and this paint party is going to have big sunflowers on it and I'm also going to make a bee for people to put on, or actually three bees, for them to put on their uh, painting. So I bought this from Etsy and it looks like this. And if you scroll in, you can probably see where the gold thread comes below the black satin stitch. So I'm going to show you how I fix that today. I haven't done a test stitch out yet. I did stitch these out and the gold did show a little bit. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, let me move this junk. Delete. Delete. Okay. So we have this one first. And I'm using a five by seven hoop so I can do more than one set at a time. These are supposed to be earrings as you can see here, but we're not gonna use them as earrings. So what I did was I came over here to this and I highlighted it and I said copy and paste. So notice that pasted a number two in here with all the parts and I can move that one down below this one. So that's perfect. And now let's check it out. This is the one that I brought in originally and I made a copy and paste. But let's look at this one a little bit more closely and you'll see what I'm talking about. Put the 3D back on. Maybe I'm a little bit too scrolled in so you can't see it very well. But here on this one, you can see where that gold is coming, hiding or peeking out from under the black, right? And I don't want that to happen. So. All I'm going to do is, this is my original, on my one that I made the duplicate, this one right here, I'm going to start stretching down the black part. Or I could alternately squish up the yellow. But I'm going to come to the dark, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to drag it down. Did you see how that automatically, watch, I'll undo that. Okay, so now you can see probably where the gold is coming below the black. If I click on the black, watch really carefully. Let's see, right here. And you can see when I drag this down, it's going to cover up that gold. Now, I don't want to cover it completely. You don't have it down below. But I want to have this black satin stitch to go over it like that, which looks great down here now. But while I'm looking, and I'm going to scroll to the left a little bit, and maybe, let's see, down this way a little bit you can maybe see that the gold sticks out right here a little bit as well. So again, I'm going to click on the black. I'm going to use this and just drag it out a little bit. Now, not to worry, because if you look down here where the stitches are, the number of stitches, as I'm dragging this out and reshaping it, it is changing the number of stitches. So that's perfect, just like that. So it's changing the number of stitches so that it will work really well. Let's look at this one over here. Well, this one looks like it needs stretched out just a hair bit also. So let's look and now see. Does it look like there's any space? Okay, that looks really pretty good to me. We could turn off the 3D and kind of get an idea. Is all of the yellow being covered? Yeah, that looks really terrific. I can turn the 3D back on and go like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this first one right here. This guy up here, because he's my dud. Just going to select him and say delete on my keyboard. Now I have this one. And I'm going to go ahead and group this for now. Group. So that they'll move as a group like this. Oh, And I'm going to move them up to the top, kind of. And then I'm going to ungroup him. Edit ungroup okay and i'm going to click on it now to select it i'm going to go to copy and paste then i'm going to drag this guy down here i don't want them too close because i want my jump stitches to to actually cut so i'm going to have them like that i'm going to put two per quadrant or per section then i'm going to scroll on down here with this one i'll go copy and paste drag this guy down with him still selected, copy and paste. And if you're thinking, you know, I could just keep, keep hitting paste, that's correct. But I would have to keep going to the very first one. And I'll show you what I... Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Got to be careful since they're ungrouped right now that 
when you do move them that you have the whole all of them selected so let's say I copy this one so I'll say copy and paste puts it right on top and I can move it right over here I can twirl it around so it fits nicely and do that now if I just hit paste instead of it copying this one it's going to go back to the other one that I copied before paste so I put it right on top of this one all right so that's pretty good right now let's look at the stitch simulator for a sec and start here so we're going to do the gold of the first B and then the gold of the second B and then the white of the first B and the white of the second B and the black and then the golds okay but I think that there's a better way that we can do this and I'm going to show you what you need to do all you have to do is come up here to utility and color sort so right now there's a bazillion color sorts look at all these we we'll do the yellow thread and then we change to white then to black then to yellow, then to white, then to black, yellow, white, black, yellow. Okay, all along there, we're changing our thread every single time. But if I come up here to utility and color sort, check this out. It says the design page has been reduced by 15 color changes. So I'm going to go to the new view and see what it looks like. And I'm going to go to the stitch simulator. Okay, check this out, you guys. How many color changes will there be? Three. So we'll put in the yellow thread, and it'll stitch everybody. Then we'll put the white thread, and it'll do all of the white. And then the black, and it will do all of the black. So that's really a savings. Um, I think one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one for a second. Not save changes. I think I will try to see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy again copy and paste and move him down here I'm gonna grab this whole guy make sure I get his wings move him down a little bit I'm gonna see if I can fit one more or two more on each one of these sides let's see I need to hold down my so right over here I can grab these since I'm having a hard time hold down my shift whoopsie click shift or sh click control control and then I can move this down without worrying about getting another fella so let's see which one is this this is this one so I'm going to hold down my control key and grab all these parts and move him down and this guy right here notice it gets highlighted over here hold down my control key and get all of these pieces and move them down Hopefully that didn't confuse you, but I thought I would try to see if I could fit one more set on here. So let's do something. Let's see, view jumps. Okay, so it's not going to jump between each guy, so between this set and this set. So we're safe like that. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at the stitch simulator again, check it out, look at all these times. I'm going to have to change my thread. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to go to Utility, Utility, and Color Sort. It says it's been reduced by 18 colors this time. I'm going to look at the new view to see if I like how it looks. Let's look at the Stitch Simulator. And again, all the yellows, all the whites. all the, So that's perfect. So now I'm going to go to File. I'm going to save my Stitch file as because... I'm going to take this over to my machine right now and get started. So I'm going to save my stitch file as, uh, let's see, they're freestanding bees sorted. And this is for my five by seven hoops. So I'm just going to put that in there. Just some extra notes for myself. And I'm going to say save. And now to send this over to my machine over there, since I have a wireless machine, I'll click on the design database transfer design that I have and actually I think I'll close that out and reopen it because that was open from yesterday so I'm clicking on it again to open it
Okay, now you can see the one that I just did because over here I went to the proper folder that I had it in. It was the B freestanding earrings, freestanding lace earrings. So remember, this is the one I just did. So I'm going to click on this. Now, don't worry if you don't have a wireless machine. You can always just save this on your thumb drive and then put it over there or your USB drive and put it in your machine. But sometimes I do like to use my wireless connection. So I'm going to download that. Here it shows up right here. And this is the machine I want it to go to. So I'm going to say, go to that machine. It says, please wait for a while. Now, since I just turned my machine on, it may not recognize it, so I might have to have it. Oh, yep, it didn't. So I have to add a machine. It's searching for my machine over there. There it is. Click on it to highlight it. Say add. Say OK. And now I can send it to my machine. and finished outputting data. So this information is all over there in my machine already and it's ready to go. So that was my quick tip for today. Let's rehash it one time. Okay, say okay. I'll minimize this. Again, what I did was I brought in one set. I noticed that some of the gold was showing, so I stretched it carefully out to make sure that all was covered. Then I copied and pasted it and put it here here, 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 and here, and here. And then, because I didn't want it to stitch out like this, that I have to sit over there by machine, by my machine and keep changing the colors of the threads like this, I went to Utility, Color Sort, and when I did that, it came up with this beauty, which is only three color thread changes. Now, there's a big jump between this first set and the third set because remember I added a few more okay so that's it I hope you like this tip see y'all again soon bye for now